Ranch owners that we work for often ask us, what is the best cattle fence? What's the best fence for cattle? And we do have an opinion. Uh, as we know, the, the cattle fence of the, of the past has always been barbed wire. And as all industries evolve, ours has too. Barbed wire has been used for uh, over 100 years. Field fencing has been used. And the new generation of fencing is called fixed knot mesh wire, and it's a high tensile fence. That's what we use. The performance is a lot better. The cost is around the same. It lasts a lot longer. Cost of ownership is definitely the cheapest, and that's how it's evolved. And so what we're installing today is about the same cost in a high tensile mesh fixed knot fence as old barbed wire fence or as a barbed wire fence of today, but you get a lot more value from it. And that's what we're gonna cover in the rest of the video series that we're producing on the question, what is the best cattle fence? My hat's off to you. Uh, this was the fence that tamed the Wild West. It's really been uh, an incredible fence for Texas, for Texas ranchers. Uh, my grandfather used it. Uh, extensively out in, in ranching in Pecos, Texas and New Mexico and uh, it's been a phenomenal uh, use for farmers and ranchers over the years. But now there's a new technology that has really become a leader and it's something that's taken over a, a space for this. We still use barbed wire and in fact in our fixed knot, high tensile mesh fencing, we put barbed wire at the top and we use it at the bottom as well. Um, it's good at the top just as a deterrent uh, for, for crossing. Um, and we use it at the bottom as a deterrent also for under digging uh, because it does have the barbs. This fence costs about as much to install as a fixed knot wire mesh fence does. Um, because it requires T-posts on 10 or 12 foot centers like you see here. Uh, there's more labor involved to install it just because you're dealing with five wires instead of one. So we, we have some economies there. And then traditional barbed wire has, you know, the class one galvanization, which is only a third of the galvanization that we have on the new generation of cattle fencing, which is, uh, is much longer lasting. It doesn't keep animals, smaller animals, from coming through as well. For example, coyotes, wild dogs, packs of dogs, pigs right here. I've got a trail where something's been coming through here. So uh, those are some of the, the downsides to this. We do still use barbed wire in scenarios where there's flooding because it doesn't collect debris. So uh, definitely a use for it. Uh, we have gone to a high tensile barbed wire, which is not common these days, but uh, it's, it's a more of a cutting edge barbed wire. It's high tensile. It's got the class three galvanization, so it does match in a, in a system with high tensile uh, wire mesh fencing. Uh, the maintenance on this, is, I would say, is similar to high tensile. However, in a low tensile version, if a tree branch hits it, it's gonna break it. If a tree branch hits high tensile, it does not break it. So those are some basic differences uh, in, in this old style fence and, uh, and the new generation. This fence is an old uh, uh, hinge joint fence. These were pretty common and still are. Uh, a lot of people refer to it as a field fence. Field fencing is great because it's a mesh, which means that small critters and things can't get through it as easily. Uh, works great for cattle in terms of a mesh. However, like you see, some of the issues with field fence are that it moves very easy. It will actually fold on these hinged joints. 
So if something falls on it or if something pushes on it, it moves very easy. The wires themselves bend extremely easy and these joints are not great. In fact, this wire is separate from this wire and so they both wrap around here that forms that hinge so it's not a great connection. Also, this is low tensile, which means that the breaking strength of this is about one third of the breaking strength of high tensile, which a high tensile wire, individual wire, breaks at around 1,400 pounds. Super high for the high tensile, but the into on hinge joint is that, like this fence, it's rusted. It had class one galvanization, which is a third of what we see on the, the new generation cattle fence. And so it's rust, it's, it's given up, it's rusting, rusting through. And that means that in, in combination with a low tensile wire, it gets weak. Uh, these wires break very easily. In fact, hogs and other animals pushing on them can break, can make holes in them. So uh, while this was, a nice solution 20, 25 years ago. Today there's something much better. And when you look at the cost of high tensile uh, fixed knot versus even today's offering of low tensile uh, hinge joint fence, it's a very similar cost. The longevity of the, of, of the uh, hinged fence uh, is, is short compared to the fixed knot. Uh, you have to put more post in place because it's low tensile, which means the cost is about the same, but the lifespan is half. Uh, so the value is for sure in high tensile. That's why it's taking over the market. This is a typical cattle fence. This is uh, a fixed knot wire mesh fence. This is called a 94912. Uh, the first nine means that there are nine horizontal wires. The 49 after that means that it's 49 inches tall. And the 12 means that the vertical stay wires are 12 inches on center. Um, we go another five inches and then put a strand of high tensile barbed wire. Uh, this is just to keep either people or animals from crossing is easy. So it's just another, another layer of, of protection. We've also got one at the bottom. You can't see it here, but there's one at the bottom that helps to prevent uh, digging under. This fence is unique because it's, being the new breed of cattle fence, it's composed of the top quality materials, high tensile wire mesh. Each one of these wires has a breaking strength of around 1,400 pounds. Uh, you'll notice that it's got a V crimp in it. This V crimp is put in because the wire itself doesn't stretch. And so when we tighten this, we actually take that V crimp and we take some of the V crimp out. So it's, it forms a spring effect. And that spring effect stays there for the life of the fence. So it's each one of these spring points is it's constantly pulling. So it's keeping itself tight through the life of the fence. Um, very unique. So vertical stay wires are tied with a fixed knot. This is very key here and that, that keeps this wire from moving, this wire from moving, it stays put. So when animals put pressure or a tree or a limb or what have you puts pressure on this, that stays in place. So the structure of the fence stays in place long term. Everything is high tensile, it's wired together well, and then it's coated with a class three galvanization, which means that uh, there is 0.3 ounces of galvanizing per equivalent square foot. The old systems, old barbed wire, for example, used class one, which was 0.1 uh, ounce of galvanization uh, per square foot equivalent. And so this has got three times the protective coating. The longevity is great. So the combination of high tensile, the knot, the, the stay wires, the fact that there are nine wires for a cattle fence as opposed to the traditional five strand uh, makes it a very robust fence. 
And the fact that it is high tensile and it's got all this structure internally means that we only have to put T-post on 20 foot centers as opposed to 10 foot centers for barbed wire. We're saving money here, both in materials and in installation labor of driving half the T-post. Uh, so it's really a, a good system. And so even though this portion costs more, this portion costs less, it balances out, you end up with a much more robust fence for around the same price. Uh, it's more robust in its ability to, to hold pressure, uh, in its longevity, in, in its ability to, for example, exclude uh, hogs. You know, a, a, a piglet could come through here, but the piglet's gonna go back over with his mom. And uh, so, you know, in, in, in our examples and everything that we see, we don't have hogs breaching this, and a hog can't push through it. It can't open it up like it can uh, an old field fence. Um, so that's really a benefit for ranchers and people that are trying to keep their pastures uh, uh, in good shape and keep the hogs out. So uh, keeps hogs out and dogs can't cross through this. A small dog could, but you know, a, a larger dog that could c cause an issue can't cross through it. So. Uh, this is something that is a standard from, for us. It's becoming a standard for uh, so many uh, cattle ranchers, especially the ones that see the, you know, can see the value equation, understand it, um, and that don't want wild hogs on their place. So anyway, it's a, it makes a phenomenal fence. On ranches, all fences going around the perimeter of a ranch have to cross through draws and creeks and um, you know different types of waterways. So how do we cross? We're using a water gap system like what we see here. Uh, this is the Floatmaster water gap system. It's exclusive to Tejas. It was developed by uh, one of the Tejas members and it works flawlessly. We've got literally thousands of these deployed um, and they're really trouble free and that's what you're looking for in a water gap. Uh, what happens here is water and, and debris flow through most channels and the reason that you can't put your fence down into the channel is debris gets caught in the fence and with the weight and, and just the, the, the energy of the water against that debris it will push a fence over. Even if it's a strong fence, as strong as our fences are, it'll push them over. So we have to have a way to release the debris that's coming through. This system is designed to do that. It's got a, uh, it's got a cable here that forms a hinge joint. The belting is hinged off of it. It rises when the water comes through. It allows debris to float under and to pass, and then it settles back down. This is something that is critical in a fence line to make sure that it's buttoned up that we don't have livestock getting out, that we don't have wildlife passing under it if that's what we're, we're, uh, we're uh, enclosing, and we don't have predators coming through it. That's what this system does. In ranch fencing, you'll see lots of types of structural braces at the terminal points on fencing. Uh, people use wood, they maybe use cross ties, uh, telephone poles, uh, new wood, uh, oil field pipe, etc. cetera. Uh, Tejas prefers to use galvanized pipe. The reason is it matches in a system with galvanized wires. Uh, it's very long lasting, doesn't have to be painted. It looks uniform with the fence. The way that this is constructed and this, we're on a corner here that goes that way and, and this way, but this could be either an H brace, if it was just this one part or a corner. And so we have the, the terminal member, it's a post, it's driven into the ground five and a half to six feet. Uh, a second post driven in five and a half to six feet. A horizontal member in between them, that forms our H brace. And then we go a step further and put a kicker off the H brace for uh, additional uh, bracing. This has a dead man at the end. We space all of these out. Uh, these are on nine and a half foot centers, so we're using 10 foot pipe on this. So that means we're grabbing a lot of ground. We're starting there, we're grabbing a big piece here and grabbing another big piece there. 
You'll see some fences, you know, people will put in a four foot H brace and that's it. You're grabbing one very relatively small piece of ground where this, we've got almost 20 feet. And that's important because we're, we put a lot of tension on this wire. And this has to be a very solid structure in order to hold that. And when we make the investment of a fence system and we've got the class three galvanization and an excellent wire mesh that's gonna last 30 to 40 years, we wanna make sure that our framework is gonna last that long as well. Uh, this is a framework that will.